All right, so what about a side, side, side? Uh, that's the next example that I have. Um, I don't know any of the angles, but I do know that side A is 8, side B is 19, and side C is 14. And so essentially what we are allowed to do, any one of them, how about I do uh, A, we know that side A squared is side B squared plus side C squared minus 2 times those sides times the cosine of A. Right? And again, doing the math, I think we've done this a couple of times, but the cosine of A is essentially A squared minus B squared minus C squared all divided by right, 2BC. And so my A is going to be the inverse cosine of all this information. So side A is 8 squared, B is 19 squared, and C is 14 squared minus a 2 times uh, B, which is 19, and C, which is 14. So let's make sure I just substitute everything right. So A, B, C, minus 2 B, C. Right, and so now we just punch that in our calculator. So uh, what do we get for A is roughly, let's see, inverse cosine. Use a couple parentheses here, one for the cosine and one for the numerator. So 8 squared minus 19 squared minus 14 squared. Close that parentheses because that ends the numerator. Divide by, one well, the denominator, open another set of parentheses, negative 2 times 19 times 14. And then close that off to do the denominator and then close it off to close up that cosine inverse. So pressing enter, it looks like we get 22 0.0751. So there's the angle A for this situation. So this angle is 22.0751 degrees. So how do I find B or C? Well, we're going to have to use the law of cosines one more time in order to do that. So how about I do it for C? So C squared, right, is B squared plus A squared a minus 2AB, the cosine of C. And then the mass is going to be very similar. We're going to subtract that and divide by that. So cosine of C is C squared minus A squared minus B squared all over negative 2AB. And so our angle C is the inverse cosine. Let's see, C squared, that's 14 squared minus A, which is 8 squared minus b, which is 19 squared, all over the negative 2, a is 8, and b is 19. So there is how we're going to estimate what c is. I believe what I could probably do is just bring up my entry again and just replace some of the numbers. Uh, so uh, this, I'm going to have to use my insert, is 14, let me get rid of the 8, minus get rid of that and write that in 8 squared minus 19 squared so 14 squared minus 8 squared up that's in the numerator and the denominator we have a negative 2 times 8 times 19 and I might have yeah I think that get rid of that 4 there alright so just uh, one of the nice features of our uh, calculators you can just press second entry and it brings what you did and you can just change the numbers up which I'm essentially doing here and doing that we end up getting 41.12 it looks like 39 degrees so there is my angle C right and so to find my angle B how about we just take 180 subtract my angle A subtract my angle C and we get our angle B all right, so I'm just using our the law of uh, four angles equal 180. So um, so 180 minus 22.0751 minus 41.1239, and it looks like we get B is roughly 116.801. All right, and so there's basically technically I guess there's a zero there because we're going to four decimals. So there's all your angles. So angle A is 22.0751, 
angle B is 116, uh, 80, 80, 10, and then angle C is 41.1239. And you can kind of, I, I forgot to mention this in the other examples, but notice the smallest angle has a smallest side, right? The intermediate angle has an intermediate side, and then the largest side has the largest angle. So that's another quick way to check that what we're doing is sound. So that is how you solve a side, side, side. So it doesn't really matter which one we do, you're gonna to have to walk through your law of cosines at least twice, right? And then once you have that, you're basically using your uh, rule for uh, angles equal to 180. Um, so there's basically the routine. Practice makes perfect, all right? Again, I'm asking you guys to do what I do in the videos. Show me your exact answer first. And then obviously you'll turn to the calculator and show me what your uh, your decimal answer is. But uh, if you show me the exact answer, I know you're following the math and you're doing the algebra, right? You're just not doing a bunch of number crunching. And the algebra is some, at times is more important because if your algebra is right in a new situation, you, then you're going to get the answer wrong. So make sure you can do your algebra. Make sure that's uh, solidified. That way when it comes to the number crunching, maybe you make an error in the number crunching, but I can at least say, ah, Right? They had it right, so I know there's a calculator error, and I can give you some feedback on that, which you might or might not have done right. But if I can at least see the exact answer, I can give you a lot of credit. If I don't see the exact answer and I do see the wrong thing, I'm stuck giving you a zero. So please make sure you show me your exact solution, right, along with your decimal approximation. All right, so let, we'll wrap up 11.3 uh, by doing an example, right, doing a little bit of an application, but I'll do that in a video coming soon.